Hi guys! In this lecture, we will set up the environment for web development. We will download and install the Google Chrome browser, brackets code editor, and its extensions. If you want to use your own text editor and the web browser for web development, then this lesson is optional for you, and you can skip to the next lesson. Okay, to install Google Chrome, open your default web browser, which in my case is Firefox. Go to Google dot com slash chrome click on this button which says download chrome you will get this dialog box go through the terms of service i usually uncheck this box because i don't want google chrome to send my usage data to its servers you can uncheck it if you are a security conscious person like me or you can keep it checked if you want to share anonymous data. It is totally up to you. I will uncheck this box and click on this button which says accept and install. Download the Google Chrome setup file by clicking save file button. I am using Firefox. You may get different options if you are using some other browser. Once the file is downloaded, click on this file here to run the installer. The Windows will present this user account dialog box. Click Yes to allow the program to run. It will connect with the internet. Download the files which might take a couple of minutes. Once the download is complete, it will install Google Chrome. Installation on macOS may be slightly different, but if you have been a Mac user for some time, I am sure you would manage to install this browser. Once Chrome is installed, it will open this window in front of you. Next, I will install brackets and its extensions. Let me just maximize this window. In the address bar, go to the website brackets.io. Once the website is open, you can see this download button. The current version is 1.14. It may be different depending upon the time frame in which you will be watching this course. These days, the websites are intelligent and they know your operating system. So if you are using Windows, this button will download brackets for Windows. If you are using Mac, then this button will download brackets for Mac, and similarly for Linux if you are using Linux. Click on this button and Brackets Installer will be downloaded. For some reason, it takes more time to download on my computer than many other files of the same size. Let me download it and I will join you as soon as the download is complete. Okay, now it's downloaded. Click on this file to run the installer. I will be using all the default values. Click on Next. Click on Install. Click Yes on this user account control. This will start the installation process. The installation process will take a couple of minutes. Once it's done, click Finish to complete the installation. The installation process on Mac may be a little bit different. In fact, I have already made a video on how to install brackets on Mac. It is on my YouTube channel and I will leave the link in the description below. Once brackets is installed, you may not see any shortcut or anything on the desktop. There are a couple of ways in which we can start brackets. First method is by using the start menu. Simply click on the start button. Here the programs are listed in alphabetical order. So go to alphabet B and you will see brackets. Click on it and it will open your brackets code editor. I will also tell you a couple of other methods to open brackets in due course of time. If you get this warning of Windows Firewall, allow brackets to communicate over public networks. Next, let me maximize this window. Okay, this is the main interface of Brackets Code Editor. On our left side, we have this sidebar, which lists our directory structure and the files. On the right side, we have this main work area where we can open our files and make changes in them. This health report, which you will see only once, tells you that the brackets will also be collecting some information about its use. 
I do not want brackets to collect and share this information, so I will change the default settings. First, let me close this health report. Now, go to the help menu. From the drop down menu, select health report. Here in this dialog box, I will uncheck this box and then I will click done. Now let's talk about these icons on the right side of brackets. This flash like symbol is our real friend and we will be using it a lot. If I hover over it, you can see that it says live preview. This is one of the reasons that I use brackets. This live preview lets us see the changes in real time. That means whatever code we write in this window, the results are immediately available in the browser window. I will show you how this works in a couple of minutes. This symbol is the extension manager. The extensions are basically the add-ons which will enhance the functionality of brackets. We will be adding the extensions with the help of this extension manager. Next, I will change the theme of the brackets. The editor comes with a couple of pre-installed themes. In order to change the theme, I will go to the view in the menu bar and select themes. You can see that the current theme is brackets light, which is the default theme of brackets. From here, I will select the brackets dark theme. I like this theme because it looks kind of pretty and puts less strain on my eyes. It's purely your personal preference and you may like to keep the light theme. It doesn't really make any difference. You may like to change the font size and the font family. I will be increasing the font size to 14 pixels so that it is easy for you to see and understand. You may want to keep it as it is or change it if you like. Next, I will add a couple of extensions for brackets. As I already told you, the extensions will make our coding experience great. To add the extensions, open the extension manager by clicking on this icon. Alternatively, you can also open the extension manager by going to file in the menu and selecting the extension manager from here. You will see four tabs in extension manager. The rightmost is default, and these are the add-ons which have been installed with the brackets code editor by default. You can enable or disable any of these add-ons. For now, we will keep these to their default values. The second tab from right side tells us about the extensions that we have installed. Currently, this tab is empty as we have not added any extensions. As we add the extensions, they will be listed here in this tab. The next tab is for themes. A variety of themes are available for brackets. You can choose any of the team you want from here. I have already selected the dark team and I am pretty content with it. If you want, you can add any other team from here. The leftmost tab lists all the available extensions which can be installed in brackets. The list is quite long and we will be using this search bar for finding our extension. The first extension which I will install is the Emmet extension. Let me search for Emmet. The extension helps us to write HTML and CSS code very quickly and easily. You may not use this extension in this course to its maximum potential, but let me assure you that this extension will save you many hours of work every single day in your life as a web developer. To install this extension, I will click on this install button. It will also take a couple of minutes and once it is done, click close. The next extension is the Beautify extension. So, search for Beautify. And I will be installing this extension by Drew Hamlet. The extension formats our code in a tidy manner and we can see and review our code with much ease. Click Install to install this extension. If you guys are having any troubles in understanding the use of these extensions, just wait for some time as I will be explaining the functionality of these extensions again once I use them. Click Close. The next extension which we want to install will help us to save our work automatically. So I will search for Auto Save. I want to install this Auto Save Every Edit extension. So what this extension does is that it keeps on saving our files so we do not have to worry about saving our work. We do not have to press Command plus S or Control plus S again and again. If you want to know more about this extension, you can click here on this button which says more info. 
This will take you to its own website or most likely to the GitHub page and you can get more details about this extension. I will click on install button in order to install the extension. It will take a couple of minutes to install the extension. Once it is done, click close. And again, click close button to close the extension manager. Now I will enable this autosave extension and to do so, go to the file in the menu bar and check this option which says enable autosave. This will enable autosave and by default our changes will be saved after every 400 milliseconds which is smaller than half a second and I think it is perfect for me. You can change the default timings if you want to but for this course I will keep it as default. That's all for this lecture. See you in next lesson.